Hey everybody, Mike here, and welcome to another Chewing the Fat with Roland Picker. Today I'm going to share with you guys uh, my, uh, my journey with the uh, infusions that I have been talking about uh, waiting to get approved for and if I decided to do them or not. I had received a couple of emails recently because I hadn't been on YouTube a lot lately. Um, you know, how I was... Uh, did I get the infusions? Did I decide to get them? Did I chicken out? And uh, so I thought, well, no, you know what? I did have them. But I'm going to bring everybody up to speed because there's some concerns that I want to share with uh, other fellow uh, people that are disabled with uh, MS or PPMS. Um, and answer a question that I got over on one of my PLS, dealing with PLS videos. Um, just to bring everybody up to speed, because I know there's going to be some new people in here that don't really know what's going on. Um, when I had gone in for this uh, surgery, well, prior to going into the surgery, I had I'd seen the neurologist and he gave me the pamphlets and all the, there's a book and a bunch of workup stuff about this drug called Ocrevus. And I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I always have probably either say Ocrevus or Ocrevus. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Ocrevus. But uh, anyway, I'll put a link down below to the website where uh, you can go and you can ch check this out. They've got some videos there, people that have been taking the infusions. I think there's another neurologist there interviewing them. And just, uh, you know, there's uh, information on uh, reactions that you can get from it, uh, how much it costs, um, if there's any assistance with the drug, you know, as far as medication, uh, not paying for it and things like that. It's all there on the website, and it's really some good information. And it, it kind of was helping me turn the page on it. Um, what really did it for me was a lot of things. And the main thing is God. God's the one that uh, really helped me turn the, the corner on this. Um, <laughs> when I was uh, in the hospital with the surgery for my neck, I remember I told you guys I was talking to a nurse, one of the nurses that was taking care of me. I talked to her and um, uh, she had mentioned that she was seeing my doctor, Dr. Hutton, over at Baylor. So I got curious. I was like, well, you've got uh, MS or some neurological thing going on. You look normal. And she said, uh, I have relapse MS. And I was like, well, I would have never known. I says, you know, I don't know much about the relapse MS. I know what I've been told about my PPMS, which is progress, primary, pr primary progressive MS or it's progressive primary. No, it's primary progressive MS is what it is. And, um, but I didn't know about the, the relapse. And she says um, a large portion of the population that has MS has the relapse. Only a, a few have what I have, which is the PPMS. And she says, um, you wouldn't know unless, uh, you know, we were in pain or or had let you know. And I thought, you know, that's uh, that's interesting. So I said, what, what is he doing for you? She said, well... Before I got to him, I had another neurologist, and they put me on these pills, these other things, and it wasn't working, and it was like the relapse. It was coming back more often. So for folks that are healthy that don't under, know what it means with the relapse MS, it means that um, you get the pain in your feet or you get a pain in your leg or, you know, your lower extremities are hurting. And um, it, it comes, it maybe it might last for five, ten minutes, it could last for a couple hours, it could last for a day, it goes away, it could stay away for a week, a month, could come back, you know, so it's relapse, okay, back and forth, whereas the one I have is just, it's there all the time, and you progressively get worse and worse, just like as if you had ALS or PLS. So anyway, uh, she told me then she got a second opinion, she went to go see Dr. Hutton, and she got referred to Dr. Hutton, so... He told her about this Ocrevus, and she tried it, and she said, um, you know, it worked. It, it works. It, it, it helps her. It's helping her. And um, I was like, well, that's good. And, it, you know, guys, it's, it's just like with anything. If you catch it early, you know, you could have some really good results. Um, but you know how I am. i gotta ha I got to hear a word from God. You know, i got to hear a word. And... Um, so I heard from her. Then when I got home, you know, I talked to my business partner, Ellen, and she had been cruising the Ocrevus website. And she says, you know, Mike, I think you ought to 
I think you ought to give it a try. She says, matter of fact, um, you remember Dr. Myers? And I'm like, yeah. Now, Dr. Myers is a chiropractor in Russell Springs, Kentucky. He's a, uh, he's a great guy, man. He's a good chiropractor. He's a good doctor. And uh, he really cares for his patients. And I was one of his patients. Um, I was uh, involved in an auto accident when I was visiting some friends in Tennessee. And um, on my way to Kentucky to spend some time with Ellen and her family. And yeah, that's right, guys. I was able to drive a car. I was still driving a car with no problems. And uh, I was walking with crutches. I could get in and out of car. You know, I could walk up and down stairs. I could do everything that you guys are doing. And uh, if you guys remember seeing some of my videos where my hands are curled up, my hands weren't even curled at the time, always into a, a, a fist, you know, always making a fist where it's hard to hold things. Um, it was, I was normal, um, other than the crutch and having to wear uh, one of those metal leg braces, full length leg braces. So anyway, I was going to see Dr. Myers and she had said that um, he asked how I was doing. I was like, wow, he still remembers me? And she's like, yeah, he, uh, he asked if, uh, how's the PLS? And I told him that you don't have that. You were re-diagnosed um, by a new neurologist. And she gave him the lowdown and he said, um, she told him that they want, the doctor wants me to take this over us. And Dr. Myers had said, tell him to get on it. Apparently his mother has relapse MS. And he treats a few patients that have MS, and um, they all are on this Ocrevus, and they're all doing really good. Now, you know, when I heard that from her, then I heard the thing from the, of the nurse. To me, that's a word from God, you know, when it's two, two or more people, and they're talking about the same thing. So, you know, I got kind of excited, and she said, now, you know, I told him, though, that, that, that the urine neurologist said, all this is going to do for you is, is more than likely all it's going to do is slow down the progression. You know, don't get your, you don't want to get your, your, your hopes up. And the reason they say that is the, uh, the, the ochrophist does not repair the damage to the nerves. Like where you lose that, I guess they call it molar or it's a, it's the outer coating. It's like, you know, if you were looking at a piece of electrical wiring, say and it's you know the blue colored wiring or your house wiring and the metal in the middle is the nerve part well there's this coating like the outer coating and chunks of it are gone your body can attacks itself um, and attack mine more because I have what they call the JV JCV I think it's JVC or JCV virus which by the way folks everybody has it in their body some it gets activated somehow like in me and everybody else it stays dormant but it's in everybody's body so you all got it and what that did does when it activated in me it started to attack my body and my or my and caused my body to attack itself it because it's wanting to push this bad host out and and it ended up turning on itself it, it makes your body turn on itself instead of you know what normal antibodies are supposed to do but uh, anyway, he, uh, he had mentioned it. So, um, and the funny thing is, is when he mentioned it, it's just like the nurse had mentioned. She said she had a, her husband has a friend whose uh, wife had PP, has PPMS, and she had gotten to that stage where she lost the ability to swallow. And yeah, and that's, usually, and that's what happens with the PPMS. You eventually lose the ability to swallow, so you can't eat. You can't drink, you know, you're going to need a feeding tube. And then the final stage is you can't breathe on your own. You need a machine, you know, to help you breathe. And that's, that's what happens. So, um, he, she had said that she had this PP, uh, had the, the thing with the not swallowing, but then when she got on the Ocrevus, um, after a couple infusions or several, I guess, she, uh, was able to swallow again. And she was, uh, uh able to stand up and take a few steps now you know I would normally have gotten excited about it but in my heart I knew that um, you know you uh, you know I, I just didn't want to get my hopes up because I have accepted that this is my norm you know and it's where well actually it's wherever God wants me but um, I don't want to go around telling people oh yeah it's gonna do this for you and, and it's gonna do this for me 
And then, you know, it doesn't do it for me, but it seems to be working in that woman. And then Dr. Meyer says that he's heard reports that it's been working for other people. Now, um, I don't know, but I do know that he said I should take it. The nurse said I should take it. My part, my business partner, Ellen, says I should take it. My daughter says I should take it. So that's like four words from God. So anyway, um, I let Dr. Hutton know. I let Dr. Hutton know that um, I've been doing all the research, and but there's a problem, and the problem is is the cost. Now it's two infusions a year, six months apart. The first one, they split that to get your body used to being at the infusion center and taking the infusion because it's through IV. And, um, and then six months later, after those two in a month, the six months later, you get the full, full bag of it. And I told him, I said, uh, man, it's $65,000. I said, and I was looking at the, uh, you know, how you can get assistance from the, the manufacturer of the drug to where you don't have to pay anything. Well, I didn't qualify. And then there was another program that I tried to get on and I didn't qualify because I had Medicare and and I'm, they said I made too much money. I don't know how I'm on disability. Disability in a small retirement, military retirement. So, but anyway, they said that, uh, you know, I, too much money. I, I make too much money, so I don't qualify. Plus with the, with the Medicare. And that said that my out-of-pocket expense could be zero to $13,000. So I told them, I says, man, doc, is there a pill version? instead of going to an infusion or something else I can take because um, I can't afford $13,000. So he says, you know, he got back with me and he said, let me, let me put the order in before you, we worry about whether or not you've got to pay $13,000 or not. You know, let's, let's at least get the order in. He said, it's going to take a while for the infusion center to, you know, to pick up the order and then process your insurance and all. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I said, okay. So, you know me, guys. I'm sitting here thinking about it. So I just talked to Pop, you know. that's. I mean, when you think about it, God's your dad, isn't he? He's Papa. He's Dad. That's why they call him Allah, you know, for Father. I say, hey, Pop, uh, man, I'm coming to you like always. Uh, it's, you know, my family wants me to take this drug. The doctor wants me to take this drug. And yet I'm looking at the dollar signs, and I'm like, you know I don't have that kind of money. And, I mean, I just the medical expenses and everything, you know, you run up debt, guys, and it catches up to you. And um, so I told him, I said, Lord, man, Father, if you want me to take this, you got to get it, uh, you got to get it free. A free, make it no cost to me, or at least a couple hundred bucks. You know, something I can I can afford. So some time goes by. You know, and Angie had asked me if I had heard from Paragon, the infusion center. And I said, no, I hadn't heard from them yet. So a little bit after I had made that comment, the phone rings and it's Paragon. So talking to the Paragon person there, and he says, um, I'm calling to uh, schedule your uh, your infusion date. You know, we have some dates in November. And I said, well, one, I can't do anything unless it's on the weekend because my son-in-law has to pick me up and put me in the chair. When you go to the uh, infusion center, guys, the staff there is just to monitor the injection and to monitor in case there's any adverse reactions or if they have to get an ambulance to take you to the hospital because uh, some of the reactions are pretty severe. And... Um, they don't do any of the other stuff, you know, like they don't pick you up, take you out, put you in the chair if you can't stand. I've got this uh, fully catheter, so they don't drain it. So, you know, Angie has to, somebody, I have to have a family member or a paid nurse. So I have my family member, Angie, who's my, my caregiver, you know, my daughter, you know her, so get this. So I said, uh, my son-in-law works Monday through Friday. I needed a Saturday infusion time. And um, the cost, I mean, if it's, if it's more than 200 bucks, I can't do it. 
the guy says, well, first of all, good news. Um, it's no out-of-pocket expense for you. I said, what? He says, yep, not going to cost you a dime. Just come on down and you can start the infusions. I said, well, I got I to gotta do them on the weekend. And he said, well, the first one has to be during the week because of staffing and, you know, we want to make sure everything goes all right. And I said, well, I, I can't do it. So we might as well not even bother with it because I can't have my son-in-law take a day off from work just to drive me downtown, put me in a chair and then come back and pick me up, you know, with, with my daughter. So he says, well, let me, we know the infusions are not, no cost use. So let me see what, let me see what I can do. So again, guys, you know how I am. I said, uh, pop, uh, here I am again. I said, uh, thank you for getting the infusions for free, but I got to be able to do them on the weekend. So, you know, if you want, uh, really want me to have them, you're going to, I'm going to have to trust you to make them all being able to be on the weekends, even the first one. Kind of reminded me of Abraham, you know, when God was going to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah and he asked, he kept asking him, you know, if there's a hundred, hundred righteous people, you know, 50 righteous people, 20 righteous people. He kept asking him, God kept saying, yeah, I'd save the, I would save the city. I won't destroy it, you know? And so that's kind of like how I felt when I asked him. And when I told him that, I said, hey, Lord, you know, it's got to be Saturday, man, or I can't do it. If you want me to do it, you'll make it happen. And I swear, in my head, I heard him say, I know this sounds so silly, but it's kind of like, you know, the saying everybody goes, he said, I heard, like, here, hold my beer. And I'm like, you know, I mean, that's what I actually felt like I, I felt inside, was here, hold my beer. And... um Two days later, I get a phone call from Paragon, and it's a lady this time, and she says, um, we've, uh, we've got it authorized for your infusions, and we can, yes, you can do them both. You can do the first initial half and, uh, uh, on, a, on a Saturday. You don't have to come in during the week, and then you'll take your second one in the same month, and then um, six months later, you'll come in for your last one for that year and so I said cool so I couldn't do it in November because it was short notice because you know Angie goes in and works on the weekend sometimes at uh, PetSmart so um, you know I have to work with her schedule too I mean you know guys listen for uh, anybody that's not disabled or doesn't have to go through anything like this or with it doesn't have to be MS it can be any kind of illness it can you can have a broken leg or something and you're stuck at home and you know people people don't realize you know, you, you, it, it can't, it's not, it's not always me, you know, I mean, I have to, I'm part of this family, yes, but I have to work within their schedule as well. So like, you know, when this, when this, when Angie had her work schedule for November, it was pretty much too late for me. Now in December, I already knew what days she was working or what she wanted to work, but she hadn't put in her schedule yet. So I said, let's do it the 7th and the 14th. And um, they said, okay. And then they called me back like the next day and said, uh, you, know how, you know how we told you we never close? And I'm like, uh, yeah. She says, well, we're going to be closed on the 7th. She says, can, um, can I reschedule this for the... Uh, 21st and the 28th of December and I said sure so I let Angie know see now this is how it works guys I let Angie know and she got her her uh, work schedule set up for that weekend James let him know at work that he couldn't go out of town on the 28th or on the 21st and the 28th because he needed to drive me down to the infusion center and and that's what I want to you know I, I guess at this point I want to I want to talk about real quick about this, uh, like I was saying about people that are disabled and those that aren't. You know, for those that aren't, that look at people that are disabled like they're in the way or they're a hassle or, you know, they're worthless or they're this or that. You know what, man, until you have been in our shoes, you need to shut your pie hole. And that's the politest way I could say it. You need to, you need to, to, 
like take me as an example. If you think that I'm a pain in the butt and that um, I'm in the way when I'm in my chair running around outside in the chair, or if you see me in the mall or you saw me in, the, in, in Walmart or somewhere and you thought, man, what this old bearded crazy coot, you know, this curmudgeon, uh, what a, you know, he's in the way. He t you know what, pal, let me tell you something. You lay in bed. You, re you, you rely on people to feed you, bring you food. You, you rely, have to rely on people to uh, empty your catheter bag. You have to rely on a nurse to change your catheter once a month. And I know this is TMI for a lot of you people, but there's a lot of you out there that need to hear this. You know, or you need your son-in-law or, you know, if, uh, uh, to p or somebody to pick you up and put you in a chair and then pick you up out of the chair and put you back in bed. You need help buttoning a shirt, dressing your pants. You can't make it to the toilet, so you've got to be cleaned up. You know, I, I challenge anybody to do that for a week and then come back and tell me how worthless people like me are or, or how much we're in the way because let me tell you something the people that take care of people like us they're angels every last one of them are angels whether it's the the home nurse that comes in any of the home nurses that have come in and changed my catheter or took care of my wound and repacked it to my daughter who helps me bathe who feeds me who dresses me who empties my catheter bag, who cleans me up when I have an accident, which is all the time. You know, that, that takes a strong person. And it takes a strong person because that strong person, w when you look at them, you see love in their eyes. You don't see this disgust like you get from on the outside. And I think if more people put themselves in the shoes of us, of others like us that either have a, a, uh, who are going through with problems with ALS or PLS or MS or PPMS or uh, they've had a stroke or they've um, had to have back surgery and they're on long-term uh, disability and, and therapy because maybe something went wrong and it's not healing right or they had both legs broken or they lost an arm or they lost a leg or they're blind. I mean, I could go on and on and on about what will constitute a, a disability. And it just, uh, it bothers me. And I had to get that off my chest. And the other thing that bothers me is the people that complain and complain that they're, they've got a disability and there's really nothing wrong with them. And I know a few. There's nothing wrong with them. Or they could get fixed and they don't get fixed because they like the, the disability checks. Let me tell you something, guys. The money's not that great. If, if I had my druthers, I'd rather be up walking around and turning a wrench, fixing car, working on cars or motorcycles like I used to do. I'd rather be doing that than this. Okay, so rant's over. So rant, rant's over. So now let's get back to the infusion. I apologize about that, guys. I didn't, I didn't mean to go off, but sometimes I just, you know how I am, man. I just, sometimes I get going and I just can't stop. It just, I get aggravated because some of the things I see, you know. Uh, but anyway, so uh, we got, we get ready to go to the infusion. We go down the 28th. We, we're there at 11 o'clock. That's or the 21st, the 11th is when it starts. Now, what it is, is the, the infusion is normally an eight-hour process, eight to eight to eight and a half hour process. But they split the first dose up to get your body accustomed to the infusion. Because you're there for about four hours, maybe five or six. It just depends on what your reaction is. So I get in there. They get me all hooked up with the IV. They give me the, um, they give me the Benadryl in pill form. They give me the, that's to help with like an itch or something. And they give me the uh, Tylenol to help with body ache. And then they give me a Santac to help with uh, acid reflux because uh, a couple of the a couple of the uh, symptoms or reactions are nausea, acid reflux, um, itching, um, difficulty swallowing or something. 
I, it, it, but it, it, those, that's just a few of them. There'll be more. And when you go check that link down below to go to the site, if you're interested in this infusion, um, you'll see what the symptoms are for, uh, you know, reactions. So anyway, and then they give you a, uh, they give, and then they give you a steroid, a liquid steroid. So you take that first and then, um, the Benadryl tablet was supposed to be enough, I guess. So anyway, I'm in the infusion. I'm already into it. And while I'm there, I'm watching like this television and I don't realize that I'm scratching. I'm scratching down at my lower part of my legs and I'm scratching my head and I don't realize it. And, um, when they come over to check me, cause they, they check your vitals every 15 minutes, like your blood pressure, your blood rate, your breathing rate, your, um, heart rate, all that kind of stuff and your temperature. And, um, I told her, I said, man, my daughter, well, Angie had come over and I said, man, Angie, I'm just scratching. Something's going on. I'm scratching like crazy. And she said, stop. And I'm like, why? What's wrong? She says, stop. Don't do it anymore. She got the lady over there to come over. One of the ladies. And I had all these little red marks on my legs. When they pulled the blanket away, I had all these little red marks on my legs. And on my left thigh, I had this huge, huge hive. And then when they looked at my head, like my whole head was covered in one huge hive. And they said, stop scratching. You don't want to open it. And so I was having an adverse reaction. So the only time I ever got hives was when I was little. Um, I got full body hives was uh, on penicillin. And I had to be stuck in a bathtub of alcohol, rubbing alcohol. Why? I don't know. I just remember it when I was a kid. And... Um, and so I was I'm with penicillin, and I guess that would be moxicillin too, or something like that, because I think that might have been one of the things that was in the in the uh, in the drug. So they started pumping me with steroids, and they t st slowed the IV down. They they started pumping the Benadryl into me, and I mean they were pumping it. The liquid it took a lot, and they were watching me. And they go, a body can't take that much Benadryl. They were worried that I was going to go into. Uh, aphylactic is that what it's called aphylactic shock because of the hives and then a reaction to the benadryl eventually um, i stopped itching and fell asleep and the hives cleared up while i was there so after that infusion you have to wait an hour so I wait, we were waiting the hour and they were came over the head nurse lady came over and told me she says we're gonna have to let dr hutton know what's happened and um and he'll decide whether or not we continue with the infusion uh, because you had to take a lot of Benadryl to clear up your body. And they had told Angie to keep an eye on me after I got home because if I still have all this Benadryl in me, that if it, when it goes away, you know, like when it depletes, that um, the hives could come back. And so she pretty much stayed up, came in checking on me. I, I, since I'd slept a little bit there, I was still awake watching TV. And finally I fell asleep sitting up in the bed and, uh, and I woke up that way and no hives during the night. So fast forward to just before the 28th, uh, the doctor had gotten a hold of me and he told me that he had talked to the nurses there and he said, let's try this. He said, take a, a Benadryl or take a Claritin before you go. Now, I, I had to be careful because if you're on blood pressure medicine, anybody on blood pressure meds knows you can't take like an antihistamine. Like you can't take clear. I used to take Claritin D. You can't take that. You got to take a special cold medicine because of the blood pressure meds. But he said I could take Claritin. So I called my primary care physician to ask them, this is what the doctor wants me to do. Can I take it? And they said, you can take regular Claritin, not Claritin D, and it won't affect your blood pressure meds. So we took the Claritin D and I ate my Pop-Tart for breakfast like I normally do and had my coffee and then we left. And while you're there, they have snacks and coffee and things if you want, you know, and they're free. So we get there, told them what the doc said. I took the Claritin. So they gave me the Zantac, a Tylenol, and I think they gave me a Benadryl tablet. So I took that 
And uh, I don't know what happened. I don't know if they gave me liquid Benadryl prior to or what. But uh, when the infusion started, um, the next thing I know, I'm opening my eyes. And she says, ah, oh, you're awake. And I says, have I been asleep all this time? She said, you have slept during the whole infusion. She said, and you're on your last 29 minutes of your hour waiting period before you can go home. And I said, wow, really? I said, uh, any hives? She says, not an outbreak at all. And, you know, it was, uh, uh, I have to attribute that to God too, because as I was laying in, as I was laying in the, in the recliner there, the chair to get the infusion, I just said a prayer and said, Father, if you want me to continue with these infusions, there'll be no hives, there'll be no adverse reactions. And I will be able to take these infusions. And, you know, and it happened. So, you know, for me, one thing is, since I rely heavily on God, and I rely heavily on hearing from Him, and I rely on Him for everything, you know, He made, He, he not only got me to turn the corner and take an infusion, he got it for, for no cost to me. He did set it up for no cost to me. He set it up for all the weekend only. And then after the reaction, the next infusion, when I asked him no reaction, he gave me no adverse reaction. But because I still had the Benadryl in me, they said to just keep an eye on him just in case afterwards. And quite honestly, guys, I'm going to tell you, other than the hives the first time, the only other thing that happened both times that gave me a problem, and I think it was because I was pumped up with steroids, was I got constipated, and that was about it. I mean, that was the only, other than the hive itching, that was just it, and and not, you know, and it was for like a week each time. So my advice to anybody out there that's wanting to do, try this drug, first of all, to the to the person who contacted me, um, on the PLS, um, get a second opinion on whether or not you have PLS. You may have PPMS. The symptoms are very similar. Um, there is a difference, a slight difference, and there's a certain identifier they can look at with um, a blood test, and if they don't see it in the blood test, then it's a spinal tap. At least that's what he wanted to do. But uh, they had the results. I think they got a hold of the results from my last, my, my last spinal tap. But um, get get rediagnosed. You know, if you're if you're if you're not certain, because I know that uh, the first neurologist I ever went to that diagnosed me with ALS and then PLS said that there is no drugs for that. There is no medication. However, they had been trying. Uh, this is what he had told me. I don't know if it's true or not, but he had said that they um, had a little bit of success extending life by giving uh, the, the meds they give for people with Alzheimer's, that the, the pill they put them on. And I hadn't, you know, I hadn't gotten to that stage yet because, you know, the story, I ended up having to come back home here and, and, and then ended up in the hospital and then a new neurologist and and like he had said, and, th and this is the only reason why I'm saying this to anybody that has, if you think, you know, if your doctor says you got MS or the PPMS, if you've got, if he di diagnosed you with PPMS and you can take this over, get on it right away. Don't do like I did. When I got told I had PLS, I thought, well, that's the end of the road. I'll just live with it. You know, I'll try diet. I'll try prayer. I'll try food. I'll try acupuncture. I'll try anything, you know, and I just left it at that. And then when I got the other neurologist, he's like, well, you know, like uh, seven years ago, we knew about this other MS. And five years ago, we've had this drug. So if I'd have gotten a second opinion seven years ago and then been able to take the drug five years ago, I'd still be able to get in and out of a car on my own, into my own wheelchair, get in and out of bed on my own, and I've still been able to get up from the wheelchair, walk into the bathroom, and use the toilet or the 
big safe step tub like it was at mom's at mama chelly's i would have still been able to do that i would still been able to stand in front of a sink brush my teeth and shave uh comb my hair i'd have been able to dress myself i would have been able to do all those things so guys don't um don't just accept what diagnosis you have and i would say that for anything don't accept just the first one Seek out a second opinion and if a third opinion, if you feel it, if you, if you uh, pray to God, pray to God and ask him to, to put you in the direction he wants you to go. And, and, you know, I had, when I started relying more heavily on that, I could feel myself being pushed or turned into a certain direction. And, and I just don't want to see people out there that can get the treatments that they need, not taking it because they think, oh, that's the end of the road. You know, well, it's not. It's not the end of the road. Matter of fact, I go see the neurologist on the 17th, Dr. Hutton at Baylor, and I don't know how he's going to determine whether or not to continue the infusion. I don't know if I have to have another MRI and then see if there's an increase in lesions or if the lesions are shrinking or what's going on, you know, in the spinal cord or any of that. Or, But we did schedule for June 20th, and that one's going to be the whole eight hours. And hopefully I'll sleep during the whole thing. You know, I'll probably stay up late and not go to bed until late and then get up early to go. And then when I get to, I'll be tired and I'll put my headphones on and listen to my meditation tapes and fall asleep. So, but that's basically it, guys. That's how I went with the infusions from start to finish. Um, and like I say, just... Please, no matter what kind of condition you have, unless your second opinion has told you that the first opinion was right, um, you know, I'm just saying, make sure you just get yourselves checked out. Take care of yourselves. Don't wait when you could have something or a procedure or, you know, if you could have a procedure done that would make your life easier or bring your quality of life up, man, get it done. And don't wait on it like I did because of my stupidity of, well, this is just accepting. This is the way I'm supposed to be, you know. So um, that's it for that's it for this podcast. I didn't mean to go this long, guys. There was a lot of information. I didn't want to split it up into two, um, you know. And I'll end this with, like I always do, you know, uh, I'm going to ask God to, bless you all every one of you and for those of you that have a disability i'm going to ask god to uh move you in the direction that he wants you to go i'm going to ask that you him that he touch your heart to open it up to hear him to tell you here's where you need to go here's what you need to do because he knows what's good for you and i believe him everything he says 100 percent and if he's doing it for me, I'm some old curmudgeon. You know, he's going to do it for you. And while he's doing that for you, I'm going to ask him to, to prosper you and your family. That, that everyone is doing well and safe and happy. And I'm going to ask that in Jesus' name, that he bless you. And if you know anybody that might find this interesting about the Ocrevus and the, what happened to me and the reaction or, you know, get them to go in that right direction to get the link to go see the drug or talk to their neurologist, um, please, you know, uh, thumbs up, like, share, leave a comment down below. Um, if you've got a question, uh, you can ask it down below in the comment section. If not, you can always send it to askmike at uh, yahoo.com. And uh, with that said, guys, I hope you all have a rest of a, the rest of your day turns out great. And we'll see you in the next, uh, in the, at the next Chew in the Fat. Rolling Picker, out.